Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be making a space flight interactive simulator in PowerPoint. It's a great idea for presentations to keep the audience engaged. Uh, and this concept can be adapted in so many ways. The only limitation is your imagination. The first thing I want to do on this animation is uh, use all my images, bring them all into the slide and remove the background of any parts of the images you don't want. Um, I've got a window here which I've downloaded from a stock uh, website and you um, click on remove background. The pink areas will be the bit that's deleted, so draw around which bits you want to get rid of. Okay, so now I've got my window. I'm now going to import my uh, images of the planets. I'm going to have three planets to start off with, but of course you can use as many as you want. You also want to be aware of how the layer system works on a PowerPoint. You're going to have a selection pane. Always use your selection pane so you can see what you're doing. And you want to make sure all the planets are behind uh, the window. So the window will have to be at the top of the list initially and all the planets will be behind and it doesn't really matter what order the planets will be um, behind the window it doesn't matter uh, but what is important is that you name all of the, the images that you're using so that when you start animating you know what's what on the selection pane uh, another good idea is to number everything number all the planets because later on when you start making the buttons you want those buttons to uh, correlate with the planets you want them to interact with. On the selection pane you also have these little eyes. If you click on the eye then the corresponding image will disappear uh, and that can be very useful when you're trying to manipulate one image and the other image is getting in the way. So uh, I always to try and be organized, click on the eye to make everything else disappear. I'm now going to make the buttons. You can use whatever you want but I use auto shapes and use a, a small circle, you can make them any size, any colour, any shape. Um, best thing to do though if you're making several buttons is just format them before you duplicate them. And to duplicate a button you click on it and then press Ctrl D and as many times as you want and I've gone for four buttons. The next thing you want to do is to go onto selection pane and you want to number those buttons. Um, you're going to number them one, two, three, and four uh, to correlate with uh, the images that you want them to interact with. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is animate the first planet. Uh, so click on the one you want to work with and then click on animate and then you can choose how you want it to appear. So the green animations are the ones that make it appear on screen and I'm gonna use a zoom animation, but you can use whatever you like. And the next thing I wanna do is go on to animation pane and um, be a bit more specific about that animation. So if you click on it and go on effect options and go on to timing, Don't click on rewind after playing, that was a mistake. Click on triggers and click start effect on click of and then choose the button that you want it to interact with. So I've gone for button one and then click OK. So the next thing I need to do now is go back onto selection pane, make the moon disappear and make the next planet appear so I can work with it and then again I'm going to animate it. Same, uh, same procedure. So I want the animation to zoom in, then I'm going to go on to, select, uh, to animation pane and I want to specify that the animation will happen when I click on the button, button 2. Click OK also play around with the duration of the um, zoom. If you make it slower it makes it more cinematic. Same again with Earth, same procedure, make it zoom in, click on animation pane, click on effect options, make it appear when I click on button 3.
easy, but I'm not finished yet. Uh, so here's the animation pane so far. Um, each of those little mouse icons represent that when I click it, the animation will happen, and it's on the click of the corresponding button. So now what I need to do is add another animation to each of those things. I'm going to click a disappear. If I click add animation and click disappear, I can then drag that animation down into the same trigger group. So for example, when I click on trigger one button, I want the moon to appear, but I also want the sun to disappear and the earth to disappear. Um, that will mean that every time I click a different button, I'll only see that initial image. Otherwise, what can happen is you'll click on the moon, it'll appear, and then you click on the earth, and it will appear, but behind the moon, which means you won't see the animation happen. So what you need to do is make sure you have, for every button you click, one thing appears and two things disappear. And the other thing that's important about this is that the other animations have to happen with previous. So at the top where it says mode on click or with previous, you have to click on with previous so that they all happen at the same time. So as you can see here, I've sped it up so that I'm dragging a disappear um, of each planet down into each group or each trigger. I've added one extra thing. So um, I've added another video, another button uh, to make it a bit more cinematic, but um, I didn't include it in the tutorial because it, it takes a long time to do. Um, but this is what it looks like on the animation pane. And if I click on uh, the slide, this is what it's gonna look like. So I've got my window. First of all, I'm gonna click um, the first button. It'll look like I'm flying through space. And then I'm gonna click on this, the first button and the earth will appear. And you can add um, extra things to that image. You can add text to give some stats on the earth or um, whatever you wanna do. You can be as creative as you want. Then click on sun it appears you could also go back to the first button make it look like you're flying again and then go on to the last button and the moon will appear so if this tutorial has been useful to you then let me know um, this concept can be used in so many different ways um, having buttons to trigger different types of presentation on screen so please let me know in the comments below how you would use it or how you would adapt it or how you, you would make this animation even better. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.